Hey guys, welcome to the Four Reefers Show. I'm your host, Devin from Reef Dudes. I also have Michael from Aram's Aquarium. We have CJ from CJ's Aquarium. And Moki from Inappropriate Reefer. And together we are the Four Reefers, where every week we do a show and help teach you guys different things about reefing. Now, one of the really cool things is since we have four different people on the show, we all have different backgrounds, different experiences, so it really brings a really great diverse kind of outlook and different views of about different aspects of the hobby, which is a lot of fun. So if you guys missed it, the first episode was on Michael from Aaron's Aquariums, and it was on converting from freshwater to saltwater. Episode two was posted on CJ's channel, and that was about algae control in the reef tank. And today's episode is going to be on cleanup crew in your tank. Now, some people love it, some people hate it. But we're going to dive that to a second. So be sure to subscribe to all of our channels because every week we're going to rotate whose channel this gets published on. Now for next week's episode, it's going to be published on Inappropriate Reefer's channel. And don't worry, I'm going to have links to all of us down in the comments below. So now get on to today's topic, which is going to be all about cleanup crew. So over time, there's been lots of different outlooks on cleanup crew. One of the old school mentality was, you know, having 10 snails per gallon. So people would put in tons of different creatures in their tank. Now, the problem with that is if you put too many in, you're likely going to run out of food. And one of them start to die off and, you know, they get hungry. There's no food. You know, one hermit crab is going to eat the next hermit crab or snail. And then you're actually just putting more nutrients back into your tank. So everything those little creatures ate is just getting re-released into the tank and it's kind of counterproductive. Now, when I first started the hobby, you know, I had, I had a bunch of snails and hermit crabs and all that type of stuff. And they do a great job and have their place. But now I literally had, try and stick to a very minimal cleanup crew, like just enough. Um, I also feel that when you're adding stuff to your tank, you should get stuff that do a specific job, right? So if you have like bubble algae, you know, maybe you want to get an emerald crab or there's you want to troke a snail if you have certain types of algae. So it really depends, like even, you know, up to types of stuff like a lawnmower blend, you can more of a fish, but it has a certain job in the tank. So I want to kind of see, get a feel of what you guys like in your tank, kind of what is your aspect outlook on cleanup crew? What do you, what do you have? What do you currently use? What have you had success with? And so let's start with Moki, Inappropriate Reefer. Why don't you tell me what you use for cleanup crew in your tanks? Hey, yeah. So um, in the past, I'm definitely like what you just said. I'll basically dump a bunch of snails, a bunch of hermits mm -hmm. into the tank. And over time, they'll just die off due to starvation. And back then, I didn't know any better. But um, in my most recent tank build um, three years ago, my approach has been just add cleanup crew. Um, first, I want to add just enough so that it kind of holds algae at this place where there's not more algae is appearing. And if I notice that's still not enough, I'll slowly add them more. And in terms of like preferences, I definitely prefer snails more than hermits. Mm -hmm. And usually I prefer trochus snails. I prefer Mexican turbo snails. Mm -hmm. I prefer serif snails for the same bed. And I'll also add just a few scallop hermit simply because like I like how they look. I feel mm -hmm. like they bring a really interesting aspect to the uh, to the to the tank. So it's not just all snails. You have some interaction between hermits as well. So that's more for like aesthetic and fun, not so much for like um, serving a purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like my approach towards cleanup crew at the moment. Nice. I, I I used the same thing as you actually. I used to do tons of hermit crabs, and now I find they tend to pick off the snails for me. So most of the ones I have now are like some red ones, an orange one, a Halloween hermit crab, like there's different ones that are more kind of sh show crabs and stuff than other things. So snails really are more the workhorses of the tank. Absolutely. So now how about you, CJ? What do you use in your tank for a cleanup crew and to deal with algae in your tank? Tell you what, cleanup crew for me is a, kind of a love hate thing, honestly. From my first tank to this tank, I've gained a lot of experience as far as how many cleanup crew to add and how much you actually need, which normally is not as much as you think. Um, as far as the type of clean crew I like, I definitely love a bunch of invertebrates because they add a lot of movement and, you know, cleaner shrimp, you know, hermit crabs. I actually love all those guys because they're always scurrying around. They're picking at things. They're getting in the cracks and crevices of your rock work a lot more so than a larger snail or turbo or something can get into. So I definitely prefer a bunch of invertebrates. That's just me. Um, and as far as the types of snails, my all-time favorite, which is pretty much everyone's favorite, is going to be trochus snails because mm -hmm. those guys are, they're fighters. You know, if you ever watch a trochus snail defend itself, you understand what I mean. Literally will take a hermit crab and shake back and forth and throw it off so it can, you know, run off. And they're fast. That's another mm -hmm. thing. But I think a bunch of invertebrates and an assortment of snails because every snail eats something different. I prefer is a different type of algae. I think is the ultimate cleanup crew. 
And um, first and foremost, just make sure you don't add too many at first. Only yeah. add them as needed so those guys don't die and turn into more problems than they're worth. Yeah, Choka snails are actually one of a, a good favorite too because they are able to flip themselves over much better than other snails, which, you know, some, if they fall on their back, they maybe just come prey after a while. So Chokas are good ones for that. So do you have any favorites for your cleanup crew? Uh, as far as favorites, I, I would say uh, definitely love cleanup shrimp, fire shrimp. Mm -hmm. They definitely are my two. I say the fire ones are cherry red. I don't know what they're called, but the red ones with the dots on them definitely yep. are eye-catching right, sure. uh clean and shrimp those guys are great and i'll tell you what uh, i really like the little conch snails <laughs> a yeah. lot of people don't really use those guys but they're so cool man they look like elephant trunks or you know the snouts how they reach mm -hmm. around and grab crevices and use their foot to kind of scoot over and they can even flip themselves over as well so Conch snails is probably another one of my top ones, and they actually breed in your tank too, which is something else I've noticed. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, good to know. I actually have three. Well, I, I had to put one in the nano, but I have two orange lip conch snails. They're probably actually one of the best cleaners in my tank. That big anteater kind of snout, they just go around the whole tank, and they're all amazing cleaners. Kind of like a secret weapon. They even stir up the sand bed a bit for you. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt, man. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the fire shrimp. They, uh, on the plus side, they do a great job of cleaning fish and, you know, they're always scavenging stuff, but on, on the flip side, they're always trying to steal food from my corals. You know, every time I feed the LPS, they grab something, they're trying to rip up that piece of mice that's oh, out of yeah. their mouth and eat it, but <laughs> so it's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, bad. Yep. But yeah, they bad at that, man. <laughs> All right. So let's go to Michael from Aaron's Aquarium. How about you, Michael? What's your outlook on your cleanup crew? <clears throat> cleanup crew. Um, I don't really use cleanup crew. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be devil's advocate here. You know, I'm gonna be the Simon Cowell of the group. <laughs> but no, I don't really use cleanup crew because I think that you should only really put things into your tank that are needed, especially if you're putting them in to do a job. And when it comes to cleanup crew, the realistically there shouldn't really be that much for you to clean up if you're running your tank you know, right, you're not putting too much food in and things like that. Um, but I got to admit, you know, when it comes to like what CJ was saying, you know, fire shrimp, cleaner shrimp, things like that, I like them for aesthetic reasons, but not so much for, you know, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, like in my system, for example, I don't have any real cleanup crew. I have a few hermit crabs and stuff, but they're for aesthetic reasons. Um, I don't even like hermit crabs, weirdly enough, because... They're always getting underneath corals and popping them off rocks and, you know, just, they're just destructive. <laughs> they're destructive. But, you know, when it comes down to crabs and snails and stuff, I don't really have any. But I do sort of like, I do feel that some cleanup for crew definitely have a spot, but I wouldn't say from the beginning because I know that quite often people say, oh, I've just started up my tank. I'm just going to get my cleanup crew in. But, that seems a bit silly to me because mm. why would you put cleanup crew into a system when there's nothing to clean? You know what I mean? Stuff's going to die. It's going to starve to death. Mm -hmm. So I would always say to people, don't use cleanup crew as your first livestock. Get fish, you know, and mm -hmm. then get your cleanup crew because then they've got something to clean up. Then they've got a job to do. So like I love urchins. Mm -hmm. I really love urchins. You know, urchins are brilliant. You know, again, they're a bit destructive, but for what they take what they give back is loads so you know my favorite cleanup crew has got to be a tuxedo a tuxedo urchin nice. love them i think they're great i think they're very comical when mm -hmm. they pick something up like they'll pick a coral up they'll pick zoas up they'll pick something up and use it as like a little disguise or whatever and they look wicked so um yeah when it comes down to cleanup crew i don't have much i have very little cleanup crew because i don't think it's a, a requirement um, as long as you're able to, you know, do your job because you're in control of the tank. So do you have snails or anything in your tank? Uh, I do actually have some Nazaria snails. Yep. Uh, they're the ones with like the, you know, the, 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 feely, the feely trunky thing and mm -hmm. like big long white foot. Um, I actually don't know where they've come from. Um, I didn't put them in. I've got them breeding in the sump. So they've mm -hmm. come from somewhere. Uh, maybe there were some eggs on the macroalgae or something like that, but there's just Nazaria snails in there. And there's also um, a single trochus snail as well, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I've just, I just every now and then see some snails mooching about. So I do have them, but I yeah. don't know where they come from. I didn't buy them, <laughs> so it's a bit crazy, really. But yeah, it's uh, they are they are cool to watch, and uh, they definitely have a function. And and having mm -hmm. stuff in your tank that has functions, I think, is is definitely a good thing as long as its function is required. Uh, no point in getting something if it's not if it's got nothing to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. It's it's kind of funny that you said you didn't add any. Nature nature tends to find a way in there it does it does yep. you know you you like i set my rock my tank up dry sand dry rock you know everything else i try to be as sterile as possible i've mm -hmm. still got astorina stars climbing all over the place and stuff like that so it's like how did you get in yep. <laughs> so nature finds a way now one of the other things too i mean you said the nastaria snails like those are the those are those guys are great for mixing for sand bed which is another kind of benefit uh Another one that I tend to use my, at least my large tank, I have a sand sifting starfish. It does a pretty good job of stirring it up and keeping the sand bed clean. I don't know, do you, have you tried any of those or what do you use for your sand bed mainly? Do, do you know what? Yeah. I, I, I've probably got to go back on what I've just said. <laughs> <laughs> because this is, this, is, this is probably the same for most people actually, because I've just painted cleanup crew into a very small box. You know, mm -hmm. just right now, just now, I've just gone. Snails, crabs, that's your cleanup crew. Mm. But no. What are you cleaning? Yeah, but also as well, that can open up so far. Like you mentioned algae blennies. Mm -hmm. Algae blenny could technically be a piece of cleanup crew. You know, yep. tanks could technically be, be a piece of cleanup crew for algae and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but if you come down to the invertebrate side of things, yeah, I do. I have I have actually got two sand sifting stars. <laughs> okay. So, See, you so forgot you had them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah i go back at everything i've just said <laughs> all right so okay so a little little more specific question so i'm going to go back to inappropriate reefer um did, how about you do you have anything special for keeping your sand bed clean because i know that's one of the bigger questions i see a lot is how do you keep your sand bed so clean i see that in my comments a lot of time so do you right. have anything specific yeah so i try to add some uh serif snails uh for mm -hmm. a sand bed and recently, I actually tried the uh, sand sifting starfish as well, nice. but unfortunately, he did not last for more than I think two months. Oh, it just bad. kind of disintegrated. Yeah, it's too bad. I had to pull him out and freeze him. Mm -hmm. um, so, in terms of sand bed, I usually just stir the sand bed myself and mm -hmm. try to vacuum it if it looks a little bit too messy. Um, but for the most part, it's not too too bad. Mm -hmm. I do have a I do have a fighting conch in there, and nice. he has been in there for a while. Um, I edit the starfish when I see that a conch cannot really quite catch up quite mm -hmm. keep up with the how dirty the sandbell is getting but i'm guessing maybe between the two of them there's not enough food for both of them in the 45 gallon tank mm -hmm. yeah a good chunk of it i think too depends on how much you feed your tank because if you feed yeah. it pretty heavy i mean there's a lot more room for cleanup crew where if you're light on the feeding then there's not not it's not so much food yeah i do also have a random tonga Nasaria snail, like those really big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I added them maybe a year ago, and they just pop up randomly from, once in a while. So I feel like he helps as well. All right, CJ. So how about you? Is your what do you use for your sand bed? Do you have any special creatures that you use specifically to keep your sand nice and white and sparkly? Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a situation to where I've tried to introduce sand sifting fish like mm -hmm. the diamond bunnies. And those guys just never tend to make it long term in my systems, whether it was in my JBJ or this system. For whatever reason, you know, the first one committed suicide, jumped in the overflow multiple times, and he just ended up dying. And the second one was actually murdered, uh, tag teamed by my starry blenny <laughs> and my blue head rice, which is a whole nother story I want to talk about when we when we get to maybe a few danger for your cleanup crew, your tank, maybe we can cover that. But uh, as far as my um, sand bed, all I do is stir it up, you know, as needed. I may get die times on it sometimes, but it's really a situation to where it just doesn't get dirty. Uh, mm -hmm. Going back to what Michael said, you know, we are in control of our tanks. Um, you know, once your tank starts settling in, balancing it out, we'll just stop having nuisance stuff happen, mm -hmm. honestly. It's just that simple. So uh, my sand bed, you know, it keeps doing what it do. So, so a bit of a common trend with you guys stirring up your own sand bed. So I guess some of you guys are kind of part of your own cleanup crew at the same time. Yeah. So like for me as well, you know, same thing, you know, sand, cleaning the sand bed and stuff. I do have two um, sand sifting stars in there, but I didn't really get them with the intention of doing a job. 
Mm-hmm. I really got them just because I like the look of them. You know, when the, when they're walking around on the sand bed, they look cool. Mm-hmm. And out of most of the stars that you see, the sand sifting stars are the ones that tend to stick around the longest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, survive the longest. And I've I've had my at least one of the stars I've had longer than the other, but I've had him for way over a year now. Oh, um, nice. And and he's transitioned between tanks as well. So, you know, he's he's doing quite well. Um, but yeah, you know, keeping the sand bed clean for me is, you know, following the trend with the rest of the guys is uh, I've tried using things like, you know, diamond go uh, diamond gobies and, you know, blue cheek gobies. I honestly I would anybody that's ever thinking about getting a blue cheek gobe, I would just say to you right now, no. <laughs> no of all the gobies that are sand sifters blue cheek just no <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> but yeah um i've tried blue cheeks i've tried you know diamond gobies i've tried tiger gobies i've tried all sorts of things but you know again you're in control of it you know this this little world is mm-hmm. your world you know you're in control your god um and i just don't provide enough food for my system to keep those animals alive mm-hmm. you know slowly but surely they get thinner and thinner and thinner and then you know they pass away so you know i don't i don't bother with that anymore so i just literally you know my sun bed i constantly work on so i never let anything settle for long enough mm-hmm. i just get myself a long pole and i just stir the sand bed up you know get everything up into the water column and then filter it with my mechanical filtration and that's mm-hmm. how i keep my you know my sand bed nice and clean so like you said i'm part of my own cleanup crew <laughs> yeah gotta, gotta put yourself to work along with a little inverse in your tank. that's it you know you're in charge of your own yeah. destiny okay so we talked a lot about keeping the sand bed clean um the next kind of one that pops up a lot is keeping your glass clean so i find snails can do a pretty good job i mean you can obviously scrape it yourself i mean less nutrients in your tanks i mean less algae growing on the glass but do you do any specific creatures or any specific things in your tank michael to keep the glass nice and clean uh, no, for glass, no. Um, mm-hmm. I have I have caught you know um, snails in the past, like uh, like trochus snails and stuff like that. I have caught them in the past, but obviously this is a seven foot system. Mm-hmm. It's seven foot by two and a half foot deep by two and a half foot high. So I obviously I don't have many in there in the first place. So one trochus snail, you might get you might catch a little line <laughs> down the glass, but that's about it, you know. So. Basically, again, when it comes to glass, mm. I'm the I'm the cleanup crew, <laughs> glass glass cleaning magnet, yep. and that's it. So yeah, for glass, no, I'd, I've I've and I've never really, I've never really considered cleanup crew for glass. So mm-hmm. I'll definitely be interested to see what the other guys say because yep. that is definitely something that has never even been a consideration yep. for me. So how about you, CJ? Do you have any specific creatures in your tank to keep your glass clean? Yeah, man, um, I got these special special snails. They're called glass cleaning snails when you get them you know they come down nah, <laughs> nah, to be honest man it's uh i swear to god i just went Ooh, what are these <laughs> i didn't miss it out <laughs> I, I was i was proper in for that then <laughs> you know what just like indonesian said, glass cleaning snails everything that eats algae and die time to your tank will attempt to clean your glass but they're only going to cover a small fraction of your glass my tangs you know, help much on it on the back wall if something, you know, builds up. Trocus snails, they definitely leave their paths. You can see where they were. But honestly, I clean it myself. And what I found, just like everything else, I can help myself by keeping my tank in balance. You know, whenever you got a bunch of diatom, you got to clean your glass a lot. It's usually a sign of something else in your tank happening. Mm-hmm. You know, an excess of silicates or nutrients or whatever the case may be that's causing it. But, you know, once I get all of that in check, then mm-hmm. I still do have to go through and give it a polish. But what I use is a mag float with a paper towel on the outside portion. So mm-hmm. uh, it gives me the two for one. You know, I shared this in one of my videos a long time ago, and some people caught it, some people didn't. But literally, you know, cleaning the outside and the inside of the glass at the same time definitely uh, helps stop you from scratching a glass too because it makes the magnet pull a little less and mm-hmm. less of a chance of digging into your glass. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I am my own glass cleanup crew. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So next we'll go to Inappropriate Reefer. How about yourself? Yeah. So I also got these glass cleaning snails. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, so like CJ, I pretty much rely on myself as well. 
I would see the snails try to clean the glass, but it's always not a super clean job. You'll see a trail and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that does help prolong me having to scrape the glass. So you should scrape the glass maybe like once a week, uh, but sometimes it can extend to maybe once every uh, week and a half. Okay. And uh, my preferred method is straight up razor blade. Yeah. But if it's really light, I would just use a, fl um, a flipper, mm -hmm. magnet, magnetic scraper, and just go for it that way. But in terms of uh, snails that I see do a pretty good job cleaning glass, uh, most of them is trochus as well as astrea snails. And mm -hmm. at night, I do see the surf snails come up to the glass as well. Um, surprisingly, the Mexican turbo has not been too aggressively on the glass, at least in my mm -hmm. tank. Yeah, but um, ultimately, I feel like it's still me uh, with my hand in the tank cleaning it yeah. up. No, that's... Would it be fair to say, let the cleanup crew handle your rock and we handle the glass? You know what I'm saying? It's like if we have one job to do, <laughs> let it be the glass. No, <laughs> that, that, that's fair. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm i actually amazed that you can get a inappropriate fear so you can get a week and a half of cleaning your glass i clean mine every couple days but i also feed excessively heavy like way too much i just broadcast like crazy in my tank i uh, maybe i just have like a higher tolerance of dirty glass that's fair i was like oh i, I can't see it anymore i can find out clean <laughs> that, that, that's fair I, I went i went a long time do you remember i went you know 20 20 days or something without cleaning mm -hmm. my glass and i don't have a high tolerance for my glass you know because the glass is the window to the world. You know what I mean? That's dirty. Then, you know, mm -hmm. you don't get to, you don't get to see. So I don't. Um, but you know, again, it's again like you know, this is a, a a regular theme it seems today. But you know, you're in charge of your own destiny, and 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 what you input into that tank is what you're going to get out of it. So like what you were saying, Dev, you know, you're a heavy feeder and things like that. So you have to clean your grass, glass uh, more often. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously what you do is going to be you know the the reaction yep. you know you whatever reaction you're going to get so you know i think you know with all these type of things you know you're the first cleanup crew mm -hmm. <laughs> now on a side note i've noticed since i've started using ozone that i've had to clean the glass a bit less i know you use ozone as well in your tank or at least you did are you still using it no, not anymore. Okay. Have you noticed any difference in your glass from using it to not using it or in how often you have to clean it? Mm, no. No? Um, okay. No. I, I've, no. I've noticed a difference in my water clarity mm -hmm. since not using ozone. But um, I use uh, carbon, you know, every now and then, maybe once a month, maybe once mm -hmm. every two months. Um, and that just seems to just do the job without me having to use ozone. Mm -hmm. Um it would be a lot simpler if I just set ozone up because then I wouldn't have to think about it. But it's just, it's just one of those. But ozone is definitely a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. So we just went over cleaning your sand bag, cleaning your glass. I mean, part of it is the creatures in your tank. Part of it is the reefer itself. Now, the next portion of it would be for cleaning your rock. So do you have anything specific that you use to keep your rocks LG free and looking nice and clean in your tank, Michael? Yes, I do actually, because over the, over my period of time, you know, I've definitely been one that's, you know, suffered from algae every now and then, you know, sometimes worse than others. Um, and being, you know, obviously, again, back to what we were saying before, you know, you can help keeping keeping the rocks clean, etc. by doing your bit, blah, blah, blah. But um, you do need a little bit of help sometimes because most of the time your light, you, you, your rocks are in direct light. So, you know, you can be as clean as you want to be. You're still going to get a bit of algae growth here and there. Uh, definitely a discoloration in rock. So, you know, I use multiple different um, animals to help me with that. So I have an Achilles tank. I only have one, but I have an Achilles tank. Um, I also have a algae blenny, who I call Grandad, because <laughs> um, he looks like an old man. Yeah. And uh, the best one, and like I mentioned earlier, is the um, urchin. Now... Mm -hmm. Honestly, the urchin has got to be the biggest grafter in my tank and the one that I see working the most. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the tanks maintain, you know, they keep everything down to a certain level, but they don't remove. Um, the algae blenny, again, you know, he maintains, but he doesn't really seem to, you know, properly remove. But the urchin can literally make my <laughs> rocks white. Yeah. You know, that's how efficient they are. I love, love, love urchins. You know, again, like I said earlier, 
there is you know there is a trade-off because they will pick stuff up you know mm. bits of coral skeleton or you know they might, might like mine's got a nice head of zoas yeah, but nice little fancy hat I'll, I'll, I'll take that hit because he does an absolutely fantastic job so you know my rocks are always pristine you know thanks to the urchin yeah. so you have got to be careful though because if you like um coralline algae you know the purple mm. algae on your rock it will also eat that so yeah. if you like that then an urchin isn't for you me personally i don't really like it because it's it shuts down the efficiency of your rocks again we'll talk about that in another uh in another video but yeah uh, i don't really like the coralline algae anyway mm. now just like another kind of plus for them i had a, like a like as a i don't know if it's a pink or what it was but i had one in my tank for ages and ages and when i turned my fuge section into a frag section i threw into my sump for a week and it literally all the algae on the glass like you know little bits of hair all that stuff in there was completely gone it was like spotless after being down there for a week you just went to town on it they do amazing jobs they're absolutely amazing i love them yep all right next cj so what do you use to keep your rock looking nice and sparkly well i tell you what uh I've had experience with two different types of rock, you know, the Marcos Reef Saver, mm -hmm. really hard, you know, non-porous rock, and now more recently, the Kukani rock. And my approach to them really was two different things. You know, that Reef Saver rock doesn't really have a lot of crevices. It's mainly just worrying about the surface of the rock, you know, getting your algae, getting blennies, definitely did a great job for me. Snails, those guys did a great job as far as the algae, but with this Bukani, I had to really start trying to figure out a way to help getting the detritus out. So mm -hmm. those detrivores, those, um, you know, cleaner shrimp, they actually have their little hands that can reach down into the crevices. Uh, some of those brittle starfish um, and even copepods. I mean, I know we didn't bring it up, but copepods are a humongous uh, contributor to your cleanup crew, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to getting to those small, you know, hard to reach places, those hard you know, detritus filled, poop filled, food filled spots in your tank mm -hmm. that's going to have deposits of stuff that can break down and needs to be eaten and, you know, removed from your system. So, you know, I'm depending on things that's going to really handle the detritus in my system more so than the algae when it comes to my Pukani rocks. So, you know, inverts, uh, copepods, starfish, those brittle starfish definitely are my top three. That's for sure. I hate bristle worms they do a great job i can't stand them they're in my tank but i'm also going to add them as you know guys that are doing a job that i don't i really don't want yeah i love the brittle stars but yeah i don't like the worms either but i like the stars no. i got tons of the tiny stars <laughs> i think those guys are awesome next inappropriate reefer what do you use to keep your rock nice and clean yeah so i got kind of like a odd choice well first of all the, the more common one is trochus snails and astrius mm -hmm. um they do do a decent job on rocks but i find that uh, margarita snails actually mm -hmm. does really well on rock uh, now, the problem is that they come from uh, colder water, so the repetition is that they don't last that long in a reef tank. But for whatever reason, I have two or three of them that have been in the tanks for at least a year plus, and they are just a beast. <laughs> now, on top of that kind of snails, I also really like emerald crab when mm -hmm. it comes to a little bit lot, like longer algae that they can actually pick off of. Uh, just like CJ mentioned, they could uh, be able to reach into little crevices and just get to, get to those hard-to-reach places. Mm -hmm. So in my tank, I kind of use a mix of what most of you guys are saying. Uh, for on the rock work, I, I think I have two or three emerald crabs. I try to put one on each rock structure, so they just kind of have their own area. Uh, the orange lip conch snails, they mainly work on the sand bed, but I do see them climb on the glass and the rock once in a while. And those guys, the big anteater looking guys, they look like little aliens, but yeah, they're, they're amazing cleaners. Uh, the other big one, which is kind of a, one of those love-hate relationships, is the turbo snails. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, the Mexican turbo snails are one of the better ones. Those guys do an awesome job of cleaning any algae off the rock, but they are big and those shells can knock stuff over. So you got to make sure everything's glued down pretty good. Otherwise they can cause, be a little bit of a bulldozer as they go over your, your rock structures. Um, aside from that, urchins, awesome, awesome cleaners if you have one. Uh, if you do though, make sure you get one that's fairly small. You don't want one that gets too big because again, those big spikes can cause havoc in your reef tank eventually. Now, yeah, just, there's many there's many different yeah. types of urchin as well, isn't there? Like you know, you, you get like the short spine tuxedos mm -hmm. and stuff. You can get the long spine ones that look like you know big pin cushions, and then you can get ones that look like sea mines. You know, mm -hmm. like the sea mine. There's many many ones, but I use the the short spine tuxedo urchins, and you know they're they're brilliant, and you know they don't really cause 
huge amounts of disturbance. They definitely do um, more of a good thing than they do a bad thing. Yeah, no, I'm definitely with you on that one. All right, guys, yeah. so we're just about at the half an hour mark. So just about wrapping up, uh, is there any last kind of topics we want to cover? There was one I wanted to make sure I touched on because I know we're running out of time. Yeah. But dangers to your cleanup crew. Got to mention this as a public service mm -hmm. announcement. When you put a cleanup crew in your tank to do a job, make sure you don't have guys in your tank that are going to eat and kill on your cleanup crew. Um, some types of hermit snails will go and kill your other hermit snails. The cleanup crew on cleanup crew crimes that happen to your tank, not to mention rasses. Now, for those that follow my channel, you're well aware, but for those that don't, I have many, many rasses in my system, eight, nine, ten rasses in my tank. Some are, you know, questionable, but there was one in particular, the uh, bluehead rats. Now, that guy made it a mission to go around and assassinate all of my cleanup crew from hermits to snails to even cleaner shrimp. So just be careful uh, to, you know, put your cleanup crew in a safe environment if you want them to do a job because they ain't going to do their job mm -hmm. looking over their shoulders. And what you'll find is those guys only come out during the night. And that means I only work in half the time, baby. I want full-time employees, not no half-time guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure they work well. He even went after the cleaner shrimp, eh? <sighs> yeah, he took them out, man. Oh, yeah. Took them right off the rock, man. We, little Joe, man, RIP. We all watched it happen. <laughs> Couldn't do nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I think, my, I think, I think that's my last well word. Is, is definitely with Clean Up Crew, you know, choose it wisely. Don't just buy it just for the sake of buying it, you know. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you know that there is a job that needs to be done before mm -hmm. you buy the cleanup crew. So, you know, if you are buying a cleanup crew member to work on your sand bed when your sand bed doesn't need to be worked on, for example, you know, don't get it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Don't just get things for the sake of things because think about that animal's life as well. You know, it's going to starve if, it is, if it's not being provided for. You know, it's there to do you a job, but you've obviously got to provide the work <laughs> so yeah. to speak so you know don't just mm -hmm. wink especially if you're a beginner and you're starting up your very first tank and everybody tells you to get your cleanup crew first don't don't get your cleanup crew first because they they do exactly what they say on the tin they clean up yeah. and if there's nothing to clean up they don't have a job to do they will starve so you know get your fish in get everything running and then choose the cleanup crew that you need if you need any at all mm -hmm. and avoid yeah, those big old cleanup crew packs right absolutely they sell yes. avoid yes. those absolutely yes, yes. because 100 percent. if you get a cleanup crew pack you know some of them will die yeah. which will pollute your tank which will make your life harder which means you will end up going out buying something else to fix <laughs> this problem and then the spiral will continue vicious you know? cycle one yeah. other thing to yeah. keep in mind as well is um there are certain creatures that only eat one specific type of algae. So if you don't have that in your tank, you very well may just be starving them, right? Or, you know, they clean it up in a few weeks and they're out of food, then what, right? So you really want to make sure you research whatever you're buying first and know exactly what you're putting in your tank. Yeah, and that's a good call because, like, if you think about it, um, harlequin shrimp, for example, will only eat starfish. Mm -hmm. So if you've got those little pest asterina stars yep. then and you want them out, then a harlequin yep. shrimp will do the job. But once it's done its job, you need to, it can't stay because it will starve. So it needs to move on. Um, mm -hmm. So basically choosing everything wisely is, you know, and you'll you'll go far. Yeah, I actually have a harlequin that I put to work for a couple of months then ended up giving away to someone for a few months. I'm like, ah, just keep as long as you want. He, he's, I'm yeah. out of food. So you got to make sure you have a backup plan if you are getting those specific creatures. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to risk an animal's life, especially if it's done you a favor. You know, it's coming to your tank, it's helped you out, it's done you a favor, it's sorted out your problem for you. Sure. least you can do is like, you know, move it onto a nicer home rather than saying, thank you very much, time to die. Yeah, no, no <laughs> <know>? exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to be good to those workers so they keep being good to you and keep your tank That's looking it. good. That's it. Okay, so all right, guys, I think we're about the half an hour mark. So thank you everybody for tuning in to the four reefers today. Um, I'm going to have all of our links to all of our channels in the description below. So be sure to you're subscribed to Michael from Aram's Aquarium, CJ's Aquarium, and Inappropriate Reefer. And so next week's episode is going to be on Inappropriate Reefer channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed and keep an eye out for that episode.
So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you guys hit that like button. And if you guys have anything specific you want us to talk about on a future episode, put it in the comments below because we read every one of those comments. And any of those great ideas will definitely happen in a future episode. So let us know in the comments and we'll see you guys next week on Inappropriate Refresh channel.